So all of our uh, things are in a position now. So let's go ahead and do a control S. Go ahead and save out that scene. And let's go ahead and bring everything back. Turn it on. To, no, we don't want to reference anymore because now we're going to start painting the weights on this thing. Alright, and now we are doing the fun part of painting our weights. Uh, best way I'm going to break this guy down for what I need to do is I'm going to do the armor pieces first because usually armor and metal objects and hard surface things are usually 0 to 1 in skinning. In, in my book it is because armor doesn't really move around unless it's melting or being crushed or something. I don't know, I'm just simpleton thinking, but let me go ahead and let me hide out the uh, body. And let's just go this layer at a time. So, first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and select every select everything on this layer, or select one of the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and select out that pelvis, because I don't really want anything associated, I don't want anything having influence on the root. But it's probably going to do it anyways because the pelvis is associated with the root. So using this here, we don't have to do the painting through this, but you can. And sometimes if you get an issue with trying to paint, it will give you a problem. But let's go ahead and let's go to the drop down menu on this end. Go down to animation and then come on over to where it says skin and then smooth bind. Now you can do a smooth bind through there. I already made myself a shortcut up to no I did not correction so I'm gonna go ahead and do skin smooth bind so now we have some influence on our bones at this point and like I was saying before there is the root has influence on some of these on some of these pieces so we're gonna go ahead and we need to go through and eliminate all these pieces one at a time so we're just gonna need to stick with one side hopefully we can still paint all of our weights so I, I like to do for this part is I'll do a lot of selective vert skinning so I'm gonna hold down my right mouse button I'm on a stylus at this point so the button is on my thumb it's a bit differently so and I'm gonna go to vertex all the verts are selected I don't want that I'm gonna go ahead and select those actually let's get rid of that root right away so I'm gonna go back all my verts are selected <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my component editor now your component editor can be found up in window general editors component editor again I'm only again I can always make a shortcut down here I did make one I'm not going to search for it right now so I'm going to go to component editor and what I need to do is I need to go through all of my uh, skinning information and you can see here that each of these is uh, the different joints labeled at the top and with the H1 but I'm not seeing how it was usually be. okay so let's skip this step let's make it easier this time I apologize for that so let's go let's go ahead and do the paint skinning now if this problem happens you can still use this kit but this has been a known issue that I've seen happen a few times so I'm just going to confirm this where it says there's no skin weighting information on this whatsoever there is the only thing is we can't use the tools through here we'll have to go through and use the skinning tool which is on skin paint skin weights tool and I usually use the window and for this I already dropped down my own little shortcut and the tool settings you're going to have all the bones that are associated with those skin, with the mesh pieces and their skin influence. So you're still skinning. You're just not using the art tool part of this. And you can it'll still and you can already tell right away that there's influence there's already similarities here between the two. The one on the far right is the one that Maya uses. The one on the left is the animation rigging toolkit. It still has opacity values, flooding just down here like floodings here, the value it's just it's the same setup. The buttons are just kind of in different places. So we're gonna. I'm gonna drag this off the window right now, and we're gonna go ahead and we need to get rid of that root. So on the root, we have all the verts selected. I need to do is I want to get rid of any influence it has. So on replace, I want to go ahead and set the value to zero. Because if I had value one, it'd be 100%. The value to zero. I hit flood. Now everything should be. You saw how it was. It had a gradient in there, the gradient's gone. 
So then if we come into here, select that pelvis again and just do a quick rotation, you can see the root has no influence now on those mesh pieces. So let's go ahead and I want to go ahead and do the chest piece first because that's the biggest piece I could see. Vertex. Select. And what I'll do is I'll marquee select some verts. I don't want that shoulder. And what I'll do is I'll hold down shift and then between the, the uh, buttons of comma and period you can grow and shrink your selection. So I'm growing and I can shrink. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grow the entire selection over the chest piece. So back to our uh, tool settings. I could see if maybe the animation tool gets working at this point. So go to paint. And now it's working. So like I said, it's just a, it's a funny thing that happens every once in a while with it, but it's you can still use the animation rigging toolkit. If worse comes to worse, you can see on this end, it popped up again, allowing us to still utilize Maya's paint, skin painting tools, but we're still using on both. Funny thing I found here though is I have like on add. If I change down the opacity limit, I'm sorry, the value limits, changes on this end too. So they're both linked. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the animation rigging toolkit since this is what we're gonna be wanting to use. So the root has no influence. We definitely can remove it at this point. Again, you can also remove that influence from I'm trying to find where the bones are on this. But yeah, it, let's just stay with here, with here for now. But you can remove that influence since we don't want it in that list. So that root, and I'm going to check, make sure there's nothing else going on here that has any crazy influence, such as the eyes or whatever. I don't need any eye influence on this. It's going to remove. Because you can do that for every single mesh piece that you have. So for here, I know I want 100% because this is a armor piece. I'm going to throw 100% for now onto I think what was it spine three spine three has a good amount of influence already I'm gonna add a, pa a value of 100% flood it spine two uh, I'm gonna take all that out for now a value of zero replace put the value to zero flood it. you get rid of it same with the spine one that doesn't need to be there and that pelvis which definitely doesn't need to be there and how can you tell, like, okay, if this guy is moving around, how's he going to look? Well, there's a good thing. The awesome thing is that I like most about this deformation setup was that uh, for what Jeremy did, he ended up throwing an ROM in here. So we have a range of motion tools we can select from. So if we're working on a chest piece, such as a spine, we can select our spine bones through this list of range of motion generator, solve it as one item, or we can solve individually and it tells you down here how many frames this animation is going to go for. So solving is one item, it's only 90, 90 frames, so I'm going to generate range of motion keys. Now if we go back and we scrub through our bar, and we scrub through our animation, we can see that it's moving around, and we can see what's going on, what's deforming, what's not deforming correctly. So we know we already removed influence from spine 2 and 3. Now we want to get rid of that range of motion. So we can go ahead and you can right click, clear our range of motion keys, and now there's no animation on this range of motion bar, on the range of motion of the character. So again, let's go ahead and let's go up to range of motion. I want to add some, uh, I'm going to add some animation to the arms because I want to see what's going on in that area. So upper arm, let's go to clavicle, upper arm, and lower arm. Solving it as one item, and I want to generate it. I can already tell there's going to be an issue going on. As you can see, that clavicle and the lower arm are already influencing a lot of that chest piece, and it's even influencing the helmet and the rear uh, antenna. So that is just simply just going through. I'm gonna close out this window. It's just going through, going through the vertex. It's going to the vertex, painting, and I just need to go through and remove these. So in replace, I'm gonna replace all these with zero upper arm, lower arm, maybe the hand. I'm not 100% sure if that hand's in there, but to be sure it's gone, I'm going to definitely flood it to zero and get rid of any influence it might have. Now, you could do that too with the other arm, but for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and I want to mirror this over. 
So using this uh, mirror skin weights function, just mirror it. I have mine set up in the positive x, negative x, y, and z for the mirror cross. Closest points on surface, closest joint, one to one normalize, and I'm going to go ahead and apply. So if we go back and we scrub through our animation again, we can still see there's influencing going on. So we're going to have to go through and keep on. This is just. This is, you're going to have to go through this entire process for most of this body. So, what I'm going to keep doing here for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to go through and quickly try to get start skinning this guy out as fast as I can. The clavicle still influenced. Replace. Goodbye. You are the weakest link. Okay. Keep on rotating through. Alright, looks like there's no influence. I'm going to make sure about the backside. No influence. Let's make sure it happened on the other clavicle, because if we happened on one, it happened to the other influencing there, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. I saw it's on the helmet. Okay, that's all gone. Alright, let's go to the next big piece. Let's go to that helmet, right click, I want to go to vertex, select, I'm going to grow up my selection. I think that's all the helmet, but I also need these things. So I'm going to select one vert there, one vert on the other side. I'm going to grow up my selection. Paint. I want to go ahead and do spine one, no influence, two, three. I don't want any influence from the spine bones whatsoever up here, so I want to go ahead. Okay, a general good thing to do is I will usually apply 100% to the thing that's going to, to the bone that's prominently going to move whatever joints, or whatever, whatever armor piece. So I want to add value of 100%. I want to flood it to the head. Actually, not the head, the helmet. I forgot we made a leaf joint for that. Let's go ahead and flood that. So for the head, I want to go ahead and turn that down to zero. Replace. Because if I have this character carrying his helmet and I move his head around, I don't want the helmet to be deforming. I don't need any jaw influence, so I'm going to flood that out. I'm going to go back up through clavicles. I'm going to flood that out. Upper arm, flood as well. I go ahead and do the other side, the clavicle. See, it's right there on the edge. Just to be sure we have all our influences gone. You can see it on a stream maneuver, so flood, it's gone. Spine 3, we don't want that at all either, so that's gone. Let's make sure spine 2 is out of there. And the upper arm. So now the only thing that should be moving it should be this helmet joint, which is right there. Make sure we have that helmet joint selected. Whoops. We already know we have the helmet joint selected as of now. If we go to attribute editor, we can see that. So if we go ahead and rotate it. Looks like that helmet's 100% influenced by it. Go ahead and zero that back. So the helmet's good. Let's go ahead and, uh, wow, let's take care of this antenna. Looks like something out of that painting with the, melt the melting uh, clocks here. Now let's also do this piece since these are both sharing the same attributes as the chest piece. So painting weights. Come down to spine one. Let's go ahead and go to spine three and flood that to 100% since we know we want all influences there. Spine two, let's take away and replace. Clavicle, we want nothing. Nothing on the upper arm. Nothing on the lower arm either. Okay, let's go to spine one, make sure that's gone. Spine two, it's gone. Going through the head, neck and head. The head. Don't need anything on the helmet either, nor the jaw. Okay, again, I saw another issue come up with the chest. Let's vertex select. Okay, for this though, it's, if you ended up making like you know, every single one a separate piece, you wouldn't have to do vert selection skinning. But because I have this all as one object, I'm doing it this way. Um, probably not the most efficient way to do it, but there's many ways to go about skinning characters. Spine 3, add 100% because I can see a little bit of gradient loss in there. So my clavicle, upper arm, lower arm. Okay. Let's check out the other side. 
clavicle right, upper arm, lower arm, hand, okay. Now we go to the neck, get rid of any of that in the neck, so zero, replace, zero percent value, the head, the helmet, and the jaw. Alright, so the chest at this point should be 100% influenced by spawn theory. This is going to be the same process throughout every single piece of armor that I have. Um, I think I will end up skipping this for now to save time on the videos. So I'm not making two or three to five videos of just doing this entire thing of the armor. Uh, when I get to the body, I definitely will start recording that again since it's more organic pieces. So when we come back, I'm going to go ahead and I'll start working on the next set of pieces such as either the body or another armor piece that needs to be that should be shown for info for uh, information so we'll be back